We thank you, O God, because you are providing us a day, O God, wherein we can have fellowship with your word, with each other, and that we can be closer to one another as a church. And we also thank you, Lord, for the times that you're allowing us to experience, even, Lord, times that are dark, troublesome, unfavorable, with crisis, Lord, because these things are helping us to be stronger and to be closer to you, O God, to exercise our faith that it will become stronger as we face more of the same in the future, as long as we are in this world. I pray, Lord, that as we study the life of Daniel, that we can see the principles, the lessons, and that we may appreciate them and appropriate them in our hearts, so that, Lord, as we, as in just a matter of time, or we may now be facing all these things also that Daniel faced, we'll be able to know what to do, so that we can remain our integrity even though we are facing these things. Lord, help me, because by myself, there is nothing in me that can preach your word or explain your word to your people. Give me wisdom. Give your people understanding. Forgive us all of our sins and make, just make our hearts worthy to be a vessel of the truth and the principles that we will encounter today in your word. We thank you, Lord, for taking care of our brothers and sisters in the Lord, Matthew and Rebecca, for giving them safe trip, that they are now here in Cambodia to continue their ministry, Lord, to the people of Cambodia as well. Lord, I pray that after everything is said and done today, you alone will be glorified in our midst. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you very much. So we are uh, going to study today in Daniel chapter 1, verses 8 to 21, a preaching that I entitled, Living the Christian Life in Difficult Circumstances. Living the Christian Life in Difficult Circumstances. As we go through life, times, there will be times that we will face difficult situations. There will be times that there will be clashes or they will clash within our, with our Christian conviction. Sometimes people of authority, friends, family may ask us or command us to do something that is wrong, something that is questionable, or something that is sinful. So when we are facing these things, what are we going to do? You see, we may... Think of many things that we could do if we're going to face these things, but it is always different to cross the bridge when we are there. So it's very important for us to develop convictions in our lives so that when we are going to face this dilemma, when we're going to face these problems, this crisis, these circumstances, then we will know what to do as we can learn from the Lord Jesus Christ Daniel and the different characters that are presented to us in this in, in the Bible. So we can see here that Daniel face is facing a dilemma. That is to eat the kind of food that is not lawful for him to eat or for them to eat, and even this food are offered to idols. In, but instead of having it easy, Daniel appealed to the authority. And he suggested an alternative. He did not go into an outright rebellion or protest against what is being shoved uh, in his mouth. It is his uh, desire to please the Lord and remain true to his conviction. So this is in connection with what uh, Brother uh, Rilson just preached a while ago that we have to be faithful unto the end. Amen. You see, because our journey as a Christian is not going to be easy. There will be a lot of snares and pit uh, falls and holes along the way. There may be some detours that we have to take in order to reach the finish line. It is not going to be a bed of roses. 
there will be thorns and there will be thistles. But what is important is that if we have a conviction to glorify God, if we have a strong conviction to lift up the name of God in our lives, if we have that strong faith to back up that conviction that was born in our hearts, then we will be able to surmount, uh, to be able to uh, uh, negotiate our way even through the very many uh, snares and pitfalls that are placed in our way. And this is what we can see in the life of Daniel. Of course, there is no a more, uh, uh, what we can say, that no better example than the life of the Lord Jesus Christ, that he went all the way to the cross. That even though the road is very hard, that even though it is filled with sorrow, that even though it is filled with heartache, and even though he died an agonizing death on the cross of Calvary, he did that. Why? Because of his love for each and every one of us. Because of the mission that he has when he came into this world. And because he wanted to provide us salvation by dying on the cross of Calvary. So we as men, lesser men, can do something, but it can only be done because of the Lord Jesus Christ. It can only be done because of the example of the Lord Jesus Christ. It can only be done because of the power of the Holy Spirit. When we study about Daniel and other Bible characters, we do not glorify them. We do not lift them up. But instead, we lift the Lord Jesus Christ because every exploit that we can do is because of Jesus. Jesus says, without me, you can do nothing. So if Daniel was able to do this, it is because of the Lord. It is because of God. If Moses was able to do that, it is because of God. If Joseph was able to do of all good things that were written in the Bible, it is only because of God. Without the power of the Holy Spirit, there is nothing that we can accomplish in life. So bear in mind that as we study this portion in the life of Daniel, we are giving tribute to the Lord Jesus Christ. We are gi giving tribute to God. We are thanking the Holy Spirit for making this thing possible in the life of Daniel. So let us look first at the resolve of Daniel. The resolve of Daniel, look at verse number 8. But Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself. You see, it's, it is very important to know what our purpose, purpose is. You see, there's a saying that if you aim at nothing, you are surely to hit it. If you do not know any reason why you are living, or why you are here on earth, or what you are living for, it is very hard to live a life that will influence people. It is impossible to live, live a life that will glorify God. So Daniel, even at the start, already purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself. There will be many things that will defile Daniel, but he said, I am not going to allow these things to defile me. In this case, with a portion of the king's meat and with the wine, which he drank. Therefore, he requested the prince of the eunuchs that he might not defile himself. You see, Satan doubtless tempted Daniel to rationalize about this situation, as we often do. You see, sometimes when we are facing a situation that will that is giving us a choice we tend to get or to negotiate the easy way we tend to walk in the path that is comfortable instead of the path that is right and it will not be easy they, uh, the satan tempted daniel to adopt excuses so as not to uh, experience difficulty in his life or in his situation but you see no matter what excuse we may give or no matter what excuse satan may offer god has an answer for every possible excuses amen they remember moses when he said i cannot speak god said i created the lips i created your mouth and he gave aaron to speak for him there is always an answer in the word of god for every excuse not to glorify God in our lives. In this instance, we may say that Daniel can apply the excuse of a command. Because it was the king's order. And when the king orders something, it is the law. 
And we know that as we see, the law of the king is something that you cannot break. It cannot be broken. But then God says that when it comes to conflict between the law of God and the law of man, we should apply Acts chapter 5 verse number 29. And this is very clear as the apostles face the very same thing. But then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, we ought to obey God. Amen. Amen. We ought to obey God rather than men. Why? For very simple reason. God created man. God is the final authority. God is more powerful. God is uh, righteous. God is wise. God knows everything. And God will not ask any of us to do something that will not be for our spiritual benefit. So when this law of man conflicts with the law of God, then as Christians, we must say, we ought to obey God rather than man. Amen? Amen. So that is a very easy choice if you love God. Amen. But if you do not know God, it's also an easy choice. And that is just to go the way of man in order not to be inconvenienced because of the law that the government has provided. Actually, this, this particular principle was uh, uh, faced by so many Christians during this time of pandemic. And some, with, for their own reasons, choose to not uh, gather together, which we may understand because of what's happening. But there are those who defied the uh, law or the command and chose to gather together. But here in the life of Daniel, it is very easy to make the decision to just go for the command of the king so that things will be okay. But by the grace of God and because of the conviction and the purpose of Daniel, he did not succumb to the law given by the king as it conflicted with the law given to him by God. As Brother Wilson aptly mentioned this morning, he chose obedience rather than compromise. So compromise is the thing that we're facing almost every day in our lives. But as children of God, I hope and I pray and I would to God that we will always obey Him instead of compromising our faith. Then there is the excuse of complications. The excuse of complication. Disobedience to man's unrighteous laws might bring severe punishment. He may be punished. He may be put to death. He may be removed from the roster that is being trained in order to serve the king in the Babylonian empire. So that is what he's facing. If you disobey the government, there will be punishment. If, if Brother Eason was able to, call, to finish his uh, lesson this morning, we can see that even though the king gave a law for all the people not to pray to his God or to any other man, for 30 days, he went in to his room with the windows open towards Jerusalem and as he did a fourth time, prayed three times to God. So in, in, in the mind of a, a Daniel, it's not even a problem. This is who I am. This is how I love God. This is how I serve God. And it doesn't matter whatever restrictions they are going to give me. I am doing the same thing again and again and again. Because God has proven his faithfulness to me again and again and again and again. Amen. So there is no reason why he must stop now. He must continue serving God. Even though it will create complication and it will entail severe punishment through to this he was thrown into the lion's den. But then again, God created the lions. God created all these wild beasts that at the command of God, they can be very, very meek. That's why, you know, when I was preaching before regarding uh, the den of lion, uh, my, my imagination is going uh, to many different places. And I said that maybe that night, even the lions massaged Daniel while he was there. They couldn't do anything about Daniel. All of a sudden, they lose their appetite. <laughs> they do not want to eat. 
All of a sudden, they became tame. They couldn't do anything against Daniel. But you see, when Daniel was removed out of the lion's den, and those who uh, planned to harm Daniel were thrown into the lion's den, the Bible is very clear that even before they reached the ground, they were devoured by the lions. So all of a sudden, they're hungry, and they are wild again. So God will not allow these things to happen if we will abide by our conviction in the Lord. Look at 1 Peter chapter 3, verse number 14. But, and if ye suffer for righteousness' sake, happy are ye. And be not afraid of their terror, neither be troubled. So we're talking about suffering, but we're talking about suffering for righteousness' sake. If you suffer because of the righteous things that you are doing for God, then we should be happy. Amen. Suffering is hard. Suffering is most often painful. But suffering can be joyful if it is done in the name of the Lord and if we experience this because of righteousness. And he said, be not afraid. This is what Daniel felt. I cannot pray. No, I will pray to God. I'm not afraid. Because my God is an all-powerful God. So he prayed. He, he is not afraid of their terror. And he was not even troubled. You will not see any protest. When, when, they, are, uh, when they judge Daniel and, and they want to throw him in the lion's den. You see, that is the Christian attitude. There is something that we do not agree. And then we defy it because we obey God. And when consequences happen, we should accept it. Because it is the will of God. And we did it according to the will of God. But sometimes you stand for God. And then something happens. And then you fight it. It is as if you're saying, I hope it will work out. Now that it didn't work out, then I don't trust God anymore. I have to fight it. I have to do everything that I could when in the beginning, you put everything into the hands of God. Amen? So, not only that, but let's also look at 1 Peter 4.14. The Bible says, If ye be reproached for the name of Christ, happy are ye. For the spirit of glory and of God rested upon you. On their behalf, on their part, he is evil spoken of. But on your part, he is glorified. Amen? What an opportunity that we will be able to glorify the name of God in our lives. You see, there are people who live their, live their whole life without giving glory to God, but heartache after heartache. But this is our chance that we can glorify God in our lives. Then there is the excuse of cost. It might spoil all chances of advancement. If I'm not going to do this, I'm not going to advance. I'm not going to be chosen as one of the uh, wise pers uh, people of uh, Babylon. I won't be able to serve in the court of the king. I will ruin all my chances if I'm not going to eat the food that is allotted for us. You see, in our life, we face this things almost uh, on a daily basis. I remember when I was pastoring in Santa Cruz, Laguna. There was this person who was offered a high position in a company that manufactured beer. And he said, Pastor, what will I do? Well, I said, there are other jobs that will glorify God. And then, but sad to say, maybe he's used to earning much money he accepted the position and he became a backslider. Why? Because you compromise your faith in the Lord. Because of money. But there are those who stayed true to their conviction. They were not promoted. Some of them were even removed from their job. But you see, they are happy, they are joyful, and later on, God promoted them. And when God promoted you, nobody can demote you anymore. 
So that is, that is a, another excuse that he could have given. But look at Psalms chapter 75, verses 6 to 7. For promotion cometh neither from the east, nor from the west, nor from the south. But God is the judge. He put it down one and set it up another. Amen? It is God who is in control. You see, our problem is the reason why we always commit mistakes in our decisions. is we, because we want to be in control. We want to, to be able to control everything in our lives. But ladies and gentlemen, the truth of the matter is there is nothing that we can control. Our God is the sovereign one. We are not. And if we will just allow God and put everything and yield everything to God, then He will guide our footsteps. He will guide uh, our way. He will light. He will put light in our way, in our path, that we'll be able to reach what God wanted us to reach or accomplish in our life. Yield to God. And He will see to it that we will reach our destination. In all thy ways, acknowledge Him, and He shall direct. Amen? Amen. He shall direct, not me, not you. It is not our part to direct our path. We are not the director. Amen? Amen? We are the actors and we follow what the directors will say. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy path. Sometimes we, you know, when we rationalize, we will fail. When we use human wisdom we will fail we must trust God because even the foolishness of God the Bible says is wiser than men Amen. wiser than the wisdom of men so that is the difference so if we are going to to make it then let us put everything in the trust of the Lord then there is the excuse of uh, what we call con Forming to the crowd. I do not know how many are these young people that were rounded up and is going to be trained. But it's a crowd in itself. And all of them are going to enjoy the king's meat and the king's wine. You see, we may say, what a privilege to eat the king's food. What a privilege to drink the king's wine. And I believe that these young people that are being trained over there are so excited about this prospect, eating like a king, drinking like a king. We're experiencing the life of a king. But it's different for Daniel. He does not apply the saying when in Rome, do as the Romans do. And everything that happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. He did not apply that in his life because he has a purpose, a conviction that he's not going to defile himself. He's molded. He's molded in the mold of the Lord, not in the mold of the world. Look at Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this word. This word is a crowd. But we should not conform to the word. We may be in this word, but we should not be of the word. But be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good, and acceptable and perfect will of God. So this is what we need to do. This is what we need to apply. That even though everybody is doing it, I will do what is right. If everybody is doing what is right, I'm going to follow them. But if they're doing what is wrong, I will choose to do what is right, the will of God in my life. The excuse of concealment. Anyway, nobody will know. I'm away 
from Jerusalem. I am away from my hometown. I am in another city or I am in another town. So even if I will do it, nobody will know. So it's okay because I can conceal all of these things that I am going to do. That's why sometimes you, the test of your character is when you are away from home. You see, our children, when they're at home or in our houses, they're very obedient. They uh, do what their parents uh, desire them to do. But once they go off to college and they may live in a dorm and they are on their own, then their real character will come out. It is so sad that I have a friend who is so spiritual, who loves the Lord, endeavor to train his children according to the ways of God. But then time came that the eldest is now in college, away from home, alone. And that child of his desired to do the wrong things. Things that will put their parents to shame. But they're doing it wildly now. Why? Because they think nobody will know. They will not even use Messenger or Facebook. They will use other forms of social media like in Instagram because I think not, not very many are in Instagram. I do not even know Instagram. I do not know how to use that. But you see, it will come out into the open. You cannot conceal it forever unless you repent of it and surrender it to God. So that is the sad thing. But Daniel is different. He may be away from home. He may be in another town. But he knew in his heart that God is always there wherever he goes. God says that I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. You go inside a karaoke bar. The Holy Spirit is in your heart. You go in places that you should not be as a Christian. The Holy Spirit is in your heart. We can escape from God. David says, wherever I go, God is there. So, there is no such thing as concealment. Or there is nothing that we can hide from God. God knows your name. God knows your middle name. God knows your last name. God even knows your aliases. God knows your number. And the Bible says, even the number of the hair in your head, God knows. He numbered them. And He named all the stars in heaven. Nothing that we can hide from God. Amen. And Daniel knew that. Psalms chapter 15, verse number 3. He that backbiteth not with his tongue, nor doeth evil to his neighbor, nor taketh up a reproach against his neighbor. I'm sorry, uh, Proverbs 15.3. You see, that's why I was surprised. The eyes of the Lord are in every place. Amen? Behold the evil and the good. So what can we do that is not known to God? Where will we go that God will not be there? So Daniel knows this. I may be in Babylon, but God knows what I'm doing. God will see everything that I will do. So because I know that God knows, then I am going to do what is right before him because I believe in him. I trust him. My faith is strong in God. And then not only that, but the excuse of contempt. You see, Daniel may rationalize, well, God allowed me to be here. So I believe whatever may happen here is God's will. So maybe it's also God's will for me to eat the king's meat and to drink the king's wine. And I will not even care what God thinks about this because he actually is the one who put me in this place. You see, sometimes we even uh, try to charge God foolishly because of the circumstances that we are in. You see, 
Life is not fair. Especially that we are in this world. Things will happen to us that we may not even conceive of or even think about. But that is life. This is what is the result of the battle between good and evil. Things will happen if we are in a war. There will be casualties. And sometimes you may even be hit by a friendly fire. And it will cost you. But, but Daniel believed something then know something than to charge God foolishly. Because he knew that God will only work for his good. And God is wise. Amen? Let us look at a couple of verses before as we move on. Move on. Psalms 37, 23. Psalms 37, 23. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. And he delighted in his way. Psalms 32, 8. I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way which thou shalt go. I will guide thee with mine eye. Daniel believes that it is, yes, the will of God. And Daniel believes that even in circumstances that might seem unfavorable, I will still do the will of God no matter what. Amen? Instead of giving in, instead of giving out, instead of giving up, then we should give all glory to God in everything that we experience in life. So instead of compromising, he appealed to the authority not in a harsh way. He appealed in a nice way. In a godly way. And not only that he appealed, but he gave the authority an alternative. You see, sometimes when you want something, you must give them a choice. You must give them a choice that will not put them in jeopardy. Actually, this is actually what Daniel did. He said, prove, uh, he proved his royalty, loyalty to God instead of man. Plan, he made a plan that will benefit both of them. Because the plan of Daniel is that, okay, you are given the task to make us physically good, look physically good, etc., etc., Okay, I will give you an alternative that will make us much better than the result that you are expecting. That is a wise decision. He gave them an alternative and that alternative will benefit both of them. That Daniel will not defile himself and the leader of the eunuchs will give a good account of his name to King Nebuchadnezzar because of a job well done. And not only that, as he put the Lord first, God took care of Daniel. Amen. You see, if you put God first, then he promised that he is going to do the same for us. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. That is the promise of God in Matthew chapter 6, verse number 33. Also in 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse number 5. The Bible says, And this they did, not as we hoped, but first gave their own selves to the Lord and unto us by the will of God. You see, we must not compromise. We must remain true to our conviction for the Lord. Amen? And we must do it only for the glory of God, not for any other reason. You see, there's a missionary who started the church with only a very, very few people. Even though the, the work is going on for a while, he was only able to gather a few people. He was tempted to quit. But at the eve of his decision to quit the ministry, he read John chapter 10, the story about the Good Shepherd. And then while reading that, it is as if God is heart, as his heart, and says that you desire to be successful for me. Of course, that is common. That should be our desire. We should desire to be successful for God. Amen? You will not plan to fail for God. But you will always desire to be successful for God. He says, you desire to be successful for me. But then, it is as if God is asking him, are you also willing to fail for me? 
are you also willing to fail for me? And that is actually a, a very hard question. Without glory, without praise, or without recognition. Are you willing to lay down your life for the few? And then as he read through John chapter 10, he says, Yes, Lord, I am going to stay. I am going to be faithful. I am going to honor you. And I am going to do things without expecting anything but to glorify your name. And he stayed. Amen. And through in, in time, God blessed and the ministry grew. Amen. Because of his faithfulness to God and to God alone without any desire to be satisfied by himself. Listen, many are willing to be a success for God and have the praise of men. Few are desperate for God and want him even if it means being a failure in the eyes of men. You see, if you will look at the ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ compared to the ministry that's happening today or even then, in the eyes of men, you will even say that Jesus Christ is a failure. Because he was able to gather 12 apostles and one of them betrayed him. And even during his time of death, only two among his followers are there. Looking for him. Looking at him. During his time of death. But then again, ladies and gentlemen, success is not in the eyes of men. Success is not being popular. Success is not having more people. Success is not having more money. Success is not having more property. Success is not having a large church. Success is glorifying God in our lives no matter what. That is success in the eyes of God. Amen. And that is what we should do. We must be desperate for God. Not for His blessings in our lives. But for God. For God alone. Because for us, God is more than enough. Amen. Is the Lord and our relationship with Him the number one priority in our lives? It was in the life of Daniel. Amen. Amen. For him, his relationship with God is the most important thing in his life. Number two, verses 9 to 10. The protection of Daniel. The protection of Daniel. Now God had brought Daniel into favor and tender love with the prince of the eunuchs. Wow. And the prince of the eunuchs said unto Daniel, I fear my lord the king, who had appointed your meat and your drink. For why should he see your face as worse, liking than the children which are of your sort? Then shall ye make me endanger my head to the king. You see, the testimony of Daniel for the Lord caused the prince of the eunuchs not only to respect Daniel, but to love him. Amen. Let's go back to verse uh, number 9. You see, Daniel into favor and tender love with the prince of the eunuchs. Favor means kindness. The prince of showed kindness to Daniel. And tender love means mercy, compassion, or womb, which has the idea of a mother's love to a nursing baby. Itinuring si Daniel na anak ng prince of the eunuch. Why? Because of his testimony. An unbeliever loving Daniel as he loves his own children. Not only that, a mother's love for a nursing baby. God was watching over Daniel and all his children. Amen? It's true to Daniel. It's also true to us. God is watching over us. And God can bring us into favor with those who would otherwise be hostile to us. Look at Joseph and Israel. It's a classic example. Joseph was brought into favor with so many people because he remained true to God. Look at Genesis 39, 21. And Jacob said unto... No, no, no. It's 39, 21. But the Lord was with Joseph and showed him mercy 
and gave him favor in the sight of the keeper of the prison. You see, he found favor. Why? Because he trusts God. He believes God. He honors God. He serves God. And God caused the keeper of the prison to give favor unto Joseph. Look at Exodus chapter 3 verse 21. And I will give this people favor in the sight of the Egyptians. And it shall come to pass that when ye go, we go, ye shall not go empty. So even the whole country of Israel, Amen. they found favor because they remain faithful unto God. 11.3 of the same book. And the Lord gave the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians. Moreover, the man Moses was very great in the land of Egypt, in the sight of Pharaoh's servants, and in the sight of people. Chapter 12, verse 36. And the Lord gave the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians, so that they lent unto them such things as they required, and they spoiled the Egyptians. Pinautang pa sila ng mga believers. They were given what they need. Why? Because God is doing that to His children. He is protecting us. Proverbs 16, 7. The Bible says, When a man's ways please the Lord, He maketh even His enemies to be at peace with Him. Your enemies will be at peace with you. Your enemy can sleep even though you are around because they are at peace with you if your ways will please the Lord. Daniel's ways please the Lord. Amen? Amen. But the question is, what about our ways? And sad to say, maybe not many can say that I know my way is pleasing the Lord. I hope and I pray, I would to God that we can say that consistently in our lives. God will protect us as we follow His will. The best way we can in following the will of God. He may allow persecution in our lives or even death. If it is for His glory, as I have said, God is sovereign and must always be sovereign in our lives. But He will supply the grace for us to bear the persecution if it will be allowed. Just look at Stephen. Even though he was persecuted and stolen to death, there was that peace in the heart of Stephen because God provided it as Stephen obeyed God's will in his life. And again, our heart's desire should be Acts chapter 5, 29, that we ought to obey God rather than men. God was protecting Daniel by working in the lives of those people surrounding him. And even if the prince of the eunuch was quite hesitant or even uh, negative to the idea of Daniel, as he said that, you see, Daniel, if, if I'm going to give in to your request, then I will put my life in danger. Why? Because if you will not look as uh, pretty, uh, is that the right word? <laughs> or as uh, uh, healthy as these other young people, then you will put my life in danger. So even though he loved Daniel, he said, I may not be able to do that, but he did not close the door for Daniel. Because later on, he asked the person given in charge of them in order to be used by God so that the will of God will happen even in their lives. Let us first look at the fear of the prince of the eunuch. You see, Nebuchadnezzar has no regard for the lives of those people who disobeyed him. Look at Daniel chapter 2, verse number 13. And the decree went forth that the wise men should be slain, and they sought Daniel and his fellows to be slain. You see? That's Nebuchadnezzar. He trained his people, gave him his food and his wine. But if he sees something that is not 
favorable for him, he's willing to kill all of them. So even Daniel was so sought and his fellows to be slain. That is the kind of person Nebuchadnezzar is. Daniel chapter 3 verse 20. And he commanded the most mighty men that were in his army to find Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and to cast them into the burning fiery furnace. Because they disobeyed the decree of the king, even though their leaders, it doesn't matter, he's going to kill them anyway. So we can see that the prince of the eunuch was afraid, and yet, as I have said, he kept the door open for them. And we will see later what happened. Why their request, or the request of Daniel, was given. You see, God wants to use us if we are willing. God wants to us to be the one to do His will. But if we are not going to let God do it, He is going to use another. But we are going to use the opportunity to be a blessing to God and to others. That's why we have to be careful with ourselves, with our testimony and our obedience, so that we will not lose the things that were wrought in our lives. Look at Second John chapter 1, verse number 8. Second John 1, 8. Look to yourselves that we lose not those things which we have wrought, but that we receive a full reward. You see, God will always provide an opportunity for service. But it's up to us to seize that opportunity or to reject that opportunity. If we're not going to do that opportunity, God will use another person and he will be rewarded and we will lose the reward. That should be given for, to us if we have obeyed God in our lives. You see, we belong to God and all we have comes from God. He can make our lives beautiful if we will be at his disposal. You see, we belong to God. What know ye not? That your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. He bought us with a price. And that price was the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. He wants to use us and to make our lives beautiful. Shine so that others will see. His, his, our good works so that they will glorify our Father which is in heaven. There is this story about a person who was a vast collection of violin. But there was this uh, a person named Fritz Chrysler who saw a very beautiful violin and he wanted it. He asked the owner to, about the price of the violin. The owner said, I do not sell it. It's my collection. So he said, that, can I just play it? And then the owner said, okay, you can play it. And he played a very beautiful tune on that violin. And then he carefully placed that violin in the case, like putting a sleeping baby on a crib. And he closed it very slowly and very carefully. And as he was about to go, the owner said, wait, take the violin. That violin belongs to you. That violin should not sit in my collection collecting dust. That violin must produce a tune that will make so many people happy. And for that to happen, that violin must be in your hands. Ladies and gentlemen, if we will be in the hands of God, we are going to produce something that will make people better, that will make people glorify the name of God instead of us just sitting there collecting dust, waiting for our time to die, and not doing the purpose and will of God in our lives. Amen? Amen. You see, God brings out our beauty. And God wants to bring that beauty in our lives by using several methods. Number one, by shaping and molding us. Amen. Isaiah chapter 64, verse number 8. That's why sometimes you say, why is it hard? Because shaping and molding is hard. It's not easy. When we are being shaped or molded, we are being conforming to something that we are not. And it is a painful process. But now, O oh Lord, Thou art our Father, we are the clay, and Thou art and Thou our potter, and we are the work of Thy hand. So we should just allow God to mold us, no matter how hard we may feel. 
It doesn't matter. Because what's important is the result of what God is doing. As we have already read in Romans chapter 12, that we need to conform to God. You see, we are not fit in the mold of this world. Why? Because we are God's children. And as God's children, we are not of this world. So if we will fit into this world, it will never happen. We will live a miserable life. Not only that, but by solidifying by fire. You see, fire of trials strengthens us. Amen. Suffering strengthens our faith. This develops us to maturity, giving us more faith, patience, and opportunity to bring glory to God. Look at 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 12. 2 Tim Timothy 2.12 If we suffer, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he also will deny us. Chapter 3 verse 12 of the same book. Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. So these are the things that are molding us to bring out the beauty in us. And by scrubbing and cleansing that is why we need to hear the truth the whole truth nothing but the truth because the truth liberates us because the truth cleanses us because the truth will bring the beauty that god is doing in our lives out into the open jeremiah 33 8 and i will cleanse them from all their iniquity whereby they have sinned against me, and I will pardon all their iniquities whereby they have sinned and whereby they have transgressed against me. God will continually clean us. That's why we confess our sins. is faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That is what God is doing in our lives. So God protected Daniel. Number three, the proposition of Daniel. The proposition of Daniel. So, the king of the eunuch is afraid for his life. But then, he put Melzar, guardian of the officer of the court, to be in charge of the food that Daniel and his companion are going to partake. Now, Melzar may be a person or a position like Pharaoh. Pharaoh is a position. So, either he's a person or a position... But he came into play here. And then he told him that test us for 10 days. And then after 10 days, you observe us and then you have the final say, not us. You see the proposition of Daniel? It's wise. Just, just allow us to do this. Only 10 days. If things don't work out, it's up to you. No matter what be the result, you are the authority. You have the final say. So they did not antagonize the leader they did not i challenge you for 10 days and i will show you that we are going to be better than all of this and you must accept that your way is not right that your system is not right no he did not do that he did it in a nice way giving alternative and the final decision to the one who is in charge of their food so because of the condition of daniel's passion melsar agreed so daniel did his best he remained pure before the lord you see godliness and truth does not shy from examination or test if you know you are right if you know you have the truth then you are not going to shy from any examination or any testing or any scrutiny because you know the truth will always prevail and it will always come out. On the contrary, if what you're teaching is false or your character is false, you will not allow scrutiny because you will be found out wanting and not true or not complete before those that will examine you. So that is the reason why it is very important as people of God, like Daniel, that we remain pure and true to our conviction. Amen. Amen. You see, your desire of purity will always be met by opposition from both without and within. 
It does not come natural for us. Even purity. It must be a desire. It must be a decision that we will do. Because we are naturally not pure. Look at Romans chapter 7, 18 to 25. Paul mentioned this to us. For I know that in me, that is in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. For to will is present with me. You see, this is, this is our experience. This is our life. For to will is present with us, right? We want to do good. We want to glorify God. We want to serve God. This is what we desire in our lives. But how to perform that which is good, I find not. And yet we still fail. For, uh, verse uh, 19. For the good that I would, I do not. But the evil which I would not, that I do. I will go to church and be blessed. And then after that, you had an enemy inside the church. There is something that you did not like. And you went out of church worse than when you came. Verse 20. Now if I do that I would not, it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. So it is very important to understand that, that there is a new creature in us and the old dynamic nature. I find then a law that when I would do good, evil is present with me. For I delight in the law of God after the inward man. But I see another law in my members warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin which is in my members. O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of his death? And then I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So then with the mind, I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh, the law of sin, but praise God. He can give us liberty. He can give us the power to say no to sin and to say yes to righteousness in our lives. Amen. Amen. You see, friends, family, and other people will oppose our godly desire, but God will help. Romans 8, 31. 31. What shall we say? What shall we then say to these things? If God, amen, amen. if God be for us, who can be against us? They will never prevail because greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. So what God did for Daniel, he will do for us who follow and obey God in our lives. Look at Isaiah 43, verse number 2. When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. God will always help us as we obey him and do his will for our lives. Some people may feel that the Lord failed them. Because why? Because circumstances are not favorable to us. Our expectation did not happen. Listen, God never fails. He will never fail me. He will never fail you. He knows what he's doing. We just have to trust God in our lives. Jeremiah 32, 27. Behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? Trust Him. Because nothing is hard for the Lord. Psalms 27, 14. I know, no. I'm sorry. Uh, Psalms 78. We will we'll not read. But if you're going to look at the whole chapter, it shows that no matter what happens, God can. You see, Unbelief asks the question, can God? But faith answers, God can. God can. There is nothing too hard for the Lord. Nothing is impossible with God. 
He will always do it. Paul says, I can do all things through Christ. As he obeys the Lord in his life. You may say, I have faith. But why is it that things are not going my way? Be patient. God is molding us. He's still working in our lives. There are things that he wants to instill in our hearts. Lessons that we need to understand. Just wait. Time will come that we will understand it better by and by. We will know how God works. Look at Hebrews 10.36. For ye have need of patience, that after ye have done the will of God, ye might receive the promise. Wait. Amen? Wait upon the Lord. Psalms 27, 14, and we will go to the last point. Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, you see? Wait, I say, on the Lord. The proposition of Daniel. And then lastly, the superiority of Daniel and his company in verses 15 to 21. We'll not read it. We have read it a while ago, but we will just, uh, I just tell you the gist of this. Ten days pass. Their appearances are much better than compared to others. You see, they are fatter and favor. And the decision of Mazar was not to change their diet. He already removed the king's meat and the king's wine drink from the uh, diet of Daniel. Their diet is pulse. A uh, pulse is a how do you pronounce L E G U M E leg legumes and maybe some peas and some uh, yeah something like that. So pulse is uh, basically legume. So that is their. Uh, that is their uh, diet that was given to them. But the thing is this. God intervenes and provided strength for their bodies and give them wisdom for their mind. You see, food is good. But it takes more than food to be healthy. It takes God to provide our health. And education is good. But it takes more than education to become wise. God is the one who provides wisdom. Amen? James, if any man lack wisdom, let him, let him ask of God. And God will give it to us. So in verse 18, let us look at this. So that's after 10 days. But then in verse 18, now at the end of the days. So what is that? That is after three years. Because the whole course took three years. Parang Bible school. Three years. They were trained and, and, and educated and all of the things of the Chaldeans. After three years, they were presented to the king and they were found ten times smarter than his own magicians and his astrologers. As I have said, who gave them wisdom? God. Not the textbook of the Babylonian. Who gave them strength? God. Not just the food that were given to them. Who promoted them? It was God. Amen? Because God is the one who promotes, not us. Don't try to promote yourself. And that is our problem today. So many people are lifting up themselves. So many people are looking down at others. So many people are saying that they were self-made men. Ladies and gentlemen, without God, we are nothing. As we have seen in Psalm 75, promotion comes from God, from the north, not from anybody else or not from any other place. In 1 Samuel 2.30, if we honor God, God will honor us. In Proverbs 1.7, if we fear God, then it is the beginning of wisdom. In James 1.5, if you lack wisdom, ask of God and He will give it to us. In Psalms 119.130, the word of God, give it light. It gives an understanding unto the simple. Trust God and God will supply whatever we need in order to make it in this life as a child of God. Amen. Amen. And not only that, God even prolonged the life of Daniel. Amen. Look at the last verse of 
Verse number 21. And Daniel continued even unto the first year of King Cyrus. You know what, what, what that actually means? God prolonged his life all the way to the reign of King Cyrus. We can see that in Daniel 10.1 10, if you're taking note. He survived and lived beyond the rule and death of Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar, Belshazzar, and Darius. Why? Because that is God's promise in Proverbs 3, 1 and 2. My son, forget not my law, but let thine heart keep my commandments for length of days and long life and peace shall they add to thee. Daniel did this. And God did that to Daniel. Daniel continued to live his life for the Lord. His life is a challenge for us today. Amen. That we should be steadfast for the Lord. Even though we may be an outcast. Or even though we are bypassed by unbelievers. Or bitter Christians. That we need to continue living for the Lord. Even though we are downcast by discouraging situations in life that we need to keep and be steadfast for the Lord even though we are harassed by hindrances from health and even problems or severe trials in our lives even if all these things will happen don't quit the Bible is very clear in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse number 58 this is something that we must apply in our lives. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, unmovable, always uh, abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. People may not recognize. People may not applaud. We may be tapped on our back, but ladies and gentlemen, if you are doing what is right and you are obeying the will of God, everything matters in our God, the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. We may find ourselves in difficult circumstances, but we can adopt the principles that we have studied today. Please God, no matter what, that we must keep on serving God, even though it is not popular, that we must not compromise our faith, that we must continue to give tribute to our God and never abandon Him, even if our life it has stake. Listen, living for Christ is a better alternative than living for ourselves. And if we want our lives to influence other people, listen, and I will end with this thought. If we want your life to be an influence in the lives of other people, put God first. Shall we stand up?